Talk about Orndorff. Um, a bit of an interesting character. Was he ever comfortable playing a babyface? Well, another guy that's probably a natural heel, would you not say? I would say that he was an uh, 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 honest, tough guy. He really was. He was a tough guy. He was a good guy. He's a little bit of a, maybe I shouldn't say this, but he's bipolar. What do you call it? Bi bipolar. Bipolar, and uh, that's a struggle for him. We've talked about it. Uh, he was never really, in, he was always uh, uh, an inch away from going off the deep end. I mean, he really was. He was a tough guy. And uh, you had to play with him that way a little bit. Uh, I have, a lot, again, a ton of respect for him. Uh, it, it was funny how he got the, he, 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 I'm trying to remember that angle. Because prior to that angle, I used to be pretty, pretty good at little manipulations and angles. And uh, Danny Spivey was a very good friend of mine. And Hulk came down to the room. They were talking about, instead of switching Paul, they were talking about using Spivey. And I know that's factual because at least I got that from Hulk. I didn't get it from, uh, from uh, Vince, but I got it from Hulk. And he wanted a, a, a way to do it. And they were tag teaming at that time a little bit. And I said, well, one day out of nowhere, Danny Spivey should come out with his hair dyed black because he's a blonde, kind of like Hulk, dye his hair black, and I'm sick and tired of being in your shadow. Slap him and challenge him, and you'd have the same kind of almost angle that they worked with Paul. It was very similar. So Danny was really hot because he was there when, I, when, when we were talking, and he felt like the finish that, that Hulk had come up with, with us, he took somewhere else and did with an old buddy, which is kind of what happened. But it was a great run, so, you know, so be it. His difficulty, Paul's uh, difficulty to work with, his bipolarity yeah. or whatever, is this what prevented him from getting a, a, a belt run? The fear that he'd be, go off the See, deep end? The problem, the problem that I have, personally, uh, with, with a lot of the way fans view the business, and uh, even you know, smart marks, I call them, they view the business as, oh, a great worker needs a belt. Totally wrong. They, they also used to look back at the old days and if a wrestler wrestled in all these 40 different territories, he must be great because he was wrestling in all these. That means he can't get over in one territory and stay there. I agree. So it's a lot of people get the whole concept of what's really talent wrong. A belt, I can, you can put the belt on anyone and make them a champ. Anyone. Just mm -hmm. have them beat people. But you can't put a worker in the ring and make them a worker. Right. So it's a waste to take a belt and put it on a great worker. In my opinion, I've always felt that way. Be that as it may, um, at this time, Vince's formula was the guys that were over were the guys that were getting the belts, right? Well, I mean, uh, when, we're when we're talking belts, I only talk the World Championship belt, the WWF oh, Championship oh. belt. I'm, the other belts are just uh, Team 2, Team 3 stuff. So when we're talking belt... Uh, oh, I, you're talking Hogan's heavyweight yeah. title. Why would Paul want to wear another belt and miss a payoff with Hulk? I mean, it would have been a disaster for him. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, so he's better off being a challenger than being a continental mm -hmm. champion. They did have Savage do that a little bit, though, right? When he was an IC champion, he did have a lot of runs with, like, belt versus belt kind of thing with Hogan. Or maybe one belt wasn't up yeah. or whatever. Yeah, they, they did that. They did that, really. That was, that was more like in 89. That was after I got sick. Uh, and then they finally give Randy the belt. But that, that was because he ran out of people to work with. Hulk did. Like I said earlier, Hulk was such a powerful talent over with the crowd that if you did a return where you left him laying, which you usually need to do with a champion, you couldn't draw because he didn't buy it. I, 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 the only time I ever worked a return with a champion my whole career and I didn't draw was with Hulk Hogan in St. Louis. Mm. We did a great finish. Uh, we left him laying. Uh, uh, my manager was uh, Fuji, threw salt in his eyes, he got counted out, we, people were throwing stuff in the ring, they were hot, uh, really hot, so we, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to come back, and I'm still a heel at this time, uh, we're going to have a heck of a house. They didn't buy it. I mean, uh. well, you know, Hulk was too strong to do returns, so that, 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 was, that was a problem they had, and I, I don't know if they ever really figured it out. At this time, Bobby Heenan engineers this, uh, this heel turn. Uh, talk about Heenan and his importance to the WWE over the years. Bobby 
was a fantastic talker, but he could also work, take great bumps. And he, uh, he, 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 he was smart enough never to come over strong. He was always the weasel. And uh, he was just a great handyman to have around as a utility guy. You could use him as a worker. You could use him as a manager. You could use him on the mic. He could do anything and, 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 and get over. Uh, very important at that time. Then later on with him in um, Monsoon, his announcers was just a home run. But Bobby came in... Uh, was immediately accepted by everybody. He's just a good guy. What do you attribute this kind of gate to? Um, is this just returning there after having not been there for a while, or is this, or is the heat of this angle that potent? Five count. Funny story. We had a show in Ottawa. I was the agent. This is down the road a bit. And Randy is working with, uh, with Hulk. The, the business, the, the, it's no longer about the, the wrestlers as much as the brand, WWF at that time. So the brand is very important. So this is an outside show in Ottawa. We got another crowd, just like a huge outdoor crowd. And the newspaper guy is there, and he asked to do an interview. And I'm the agent, so I okay it with Hulk. Because I know Hulk can handle, can handle any interview you want to give him. So the guy come in and, uh, and he said uh, to Hulk, he says, uh, we know that wrestling is all a show. And uh, kind of, you know, work that way. And, and uh, Hulk said, well, whatever it is, look at the crowd. And rather than argue and making, you know, say, whatever it is, look at the crowd. So the guy, I, I got the article the next day, went out into the fans he said, well, you know, this is just a show. Why did you come? Why are you here? And this one guy said, uh, he, he, and he said, when Hulk threw that punch for the finish and missed Randy by that much and he took that bump, you could see that, couldn't you? The guy said, yes. But just think what would have happened if he had hit him. <laughs> and the fans are working who? <laughs> Just think what would have happened if it really hit them. So everything was promotion, and they wanted to see it, and they didn't care what it was. They really didn't. They're looking at each other, and I'm going to jump. I put my finger up, so we both jump. But if you want to know the truth, Andre beat him. They changed it for TV? Don't tell anybody, but Andre beat him. Landed first. Oh, yeah, he should have been champion. I bet he'd tell me that, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Was this a Patterson angle? Who would come up with this at the time, 86, doing a Saturday Night's Main Event? Probably Vince and Pat, possibly. Although at that time, they'd have five or six people coming in, and and talking, and uh, uh, it was a, usually a conglomeration of ideas. Uh, Pat had a lot of cartoonish ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, uh.